So welcome to today's exercise about um, planning, uh, learning and planning methods. So last time we were talking about n-step methods and, and there we had this parameter n, which meant how many steps we, we actually want to sample from the environment in order to do a single learning step. This time around we once again have a parameter n, but it actually has a different meaning. So for n-step methods, it was this how many actual experiences from the environment we put together to form a bootstrapping estimate. This time around, it's how many planning steps or how, how much, um, how often we do learning from planning in contrast to learning from actual experience. So learning from planning essentially means that we learn from some kind of model of our environment and instead of learning from experience that we directly sampled at the point, at the point in time where we actually learn. Um, in this exercise, we will once more be looking at the inverted pendulum, which we already got to know in the last exercise. Um, we once again will be uh, discretizing the state that we get out of the environment and continualize our action that we put into in the environment because the environment itself is actually defined in um, continuous time and our methods are still tabular, uh, not continuous time, continuous um, action and state space and our methods are still discrete in the state and action space. Okay, so what we will be looking at is a DynaQ framework, which is actually used in both of the exercises. So it's used in, in the first as well as the second exercise. And so let's maybe have a look at it, how it is, how it is implemented for the first task. So for the first task, um, what we do is or what differs between the two tasks is the way the um, model works. So in the first task, we just have a dictionary model, which can be seen here, down here. So here we have our DynaQ function, which is a whole learning process in one single function. We just do that so we can run it with different parameters quickly without much code reuse. So yeah, most of it should be fairly straightforward. We um, initialize our environment, we initialize our action values because we want to do control here, we initialize um, a policy, and then we have our model here, which looks yeah, really, really simple. It's just a di dictionary, and in a second we will see how we can use that. Okay, so at this point here, we go into the main episode, so into the episode loop, so there was a J loop up here, and then yeah, we just initialize our first state, and then we actually already go into the rollout of the episode. And the episode rollout is also, I, I would say this whole um, algorithm actually rather simple compared to what we've seen in the last week. So from, the com from a complexity standpoint, these planning methods are a lot simpler than the end step methods. So what we do here is essentially in the first step is we do the interaction with the environment, which is the pseudocode, the first two lines of this episode rollout. So we choose a po an action from the policy, we apply it to the environment, and we um, yeah, say we, we, we observe what the environment's response to this is in the form of the next state and the reward. And yeah, we can quickly look into the function, but this, this is something that you should have seen a few times already. So with a probability of one minus epsilon, we do the greedy action that our policy or our our policy table tells us, and with the probability of epsilon, we do the exploratory action, which is just a random action. Then we have to do have to do yeah, continualize the action because of the continuous action space of the act of the environment we are dealing with. We apply the action to the environment, and then we discretize the state that we get out of the environment. This is all that happens in this intact and should not be new to anyone, anyone here. And then afterwards. Um, we save our experience in this model. And we do so by, by simply um, creating a new key in the, in the dictionary with the state and action combination. So yeah, these are, this should be tuples, I think, and you can just um, use tuples as, as the key in a, in a dictionary. And what we save at that, um, at that point in the dictionary is the next state and the reward. So what we get here is a mapping of state action to next state and reward. This is what we save in our model. 
And then what we do next is we learn from the momentary experience. So from the interactions that we've just made, we learn now and we do so using really simple Q learning. Uh, yeah, Q learning. So this is also should be nothing new for, for all, all of you here. So we update our action values at the state action combination that we've observed by doing by adding to it the learning rate times the bootstrapped uh, yeah, error where we do bootstrapping with the maximum operator. So Q, as, as you've already seen, how we always do it for Q-learning. Um, yeah, and then after we're done with that, we, uh, so if we would do normal Q-learning, we would just stop at this point, we would go to the next iteration and we would continue to do so over and over again. But in this case, it's a bit different because of the learning which comes in next. So we, we do set the, the state for the next iteration to the next state of the current iteration. We append the rewards for um, just for, for, for logging. And then now comes what's, what makes this different. And this is this part of the algorithm, which is these four lines in the pseudocode, this, this stuff here. And that is that we now learn from the data that we've stored in the model for n, n steps, which, yeah, which we can choose as a hyperparameter, this n. So if we go and look he into here, what happens here is actually that we just take our model and we sample a random state action combination from the model. So um, we start in the model, we store some state action combinations and we just take one of them. And from the model, we then also take the next state and the reward that we saved that belong to the state action combination. Now we can just do the learning step, which we already did for the um, for the momentary experience, also for this experience that was stored in the model. And this learning function is actually exactly the same that was also used for the momentary experience. And this is also just Q learning. And actually, this is already all that, that we do here. So we interact with the environment. We gather um, our observation, so our, our state action, uh, maybe our state action, next state reward. We store that information in the model. We learn from what we've just seen. And then we, for n steps, we also, yeah, we go through the experience that we've gathered in the past. And we also learn from, yeah, random, random things that we've seen in the past, random interactions. And this, yeah, this is, what's interesting here is that the model is not very sophisticated. It's just, just storing random stuff. And in the next ta task, we will be looking at something a bit more complex for the model. But this is, yeah, for the first task, this is already it. And if we look at the result um, over here, you can see the accumulated rewards, I think. Yeah, cumulative, cumulative rewards. So the sum of rewards for um, a specific episode. And we can see that when we, do, when we don't do planning, we take a lot of episodes to, yeah, to learn something, to make progress with our task. If we do planning from experience, we can reuse the experience a lot more efficiently and be a lot faster. It should be noted here that that does, this does not mean that it's, it's for this specific case it's, it's, that it's computationally very simple. So if we do pla ex planning from experience, we also do a lot more learning like we do, or in this case, we do the same amount of learning steps. So in the no planning case, we just have to do a lot of more interaction with the, with the environment to gain new, new information. And in the um, planning from experience, we just reuse the old information that we got out of old interactions and do like another learning step with this. And yeah, I think it's um, important to understand that in the case that in, uh, interaction with the environment is very expensive, it is extremely valuable to reuse uh, your information. So when you like for each interaction with the environment have to do a costly test on some real test bench or something like this is, is really valuable to reuse the information, which we don't do when we're not doing any planning at all. Okay. If it's really cheap to interact with the environment, it might make sense to not do the, to, to not do the planning at all, because it might be easier to just acquire new information. That's what, what's supposed to be shown here or what's supposed to get clear here. Okay. Now, in the second task, we will be looking at a little bit of a different model. So the algorithm is still essentially the same. The main difference is 
how we store or like how we um create our model and how we use uh, like how we get information or experience out of the model and what we do here is instead of um creating the model on the go we just build up an, a model of the environment from like ex experience or pre-knowledge. Pre, um, pre and then we use this simulation to learn during each episode, uh, to, to learn during each, yeah, in each step. And for this specific case, we, yeah, we gave you all of the um, mathematical equations for the pendulum. And you were supposed to write the Write the environment or like the the model of the pendulum yourself here. Um, I'm not sure how how deep I should go into this. I'm not sure how much trouble you had with this. So maybe if you have, I will quickly uh, gloss over it. And if you have further questions, you are free to um, free to ask them. So first, you were supposed to write the initialization of the mo of the pendulum model, which is mostly just saving um, some parameters. Okay, I realized maybe this is not perfect. Maybe this should be a bit clearer what you, that you're supposed to do this here. But and nevertheless, um, you should just save some parameters in the initialization of the pendulum. Here we store anything that stays constant throughout um, the, the, the environment. Then you were supposed to reset, uh, write a reset function, which, okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I mean, I have to, I realize at this point maybe it should you know, some more work needs to go in there. I'm not sure if it's better described above here. I think it's a bit difficult to to understand that the reset method should. Oh yeah, okay, it's written here, but maybe it could be a bit clearer. That reset function should um, return a random state if you don't insert anything into it. Probably should be written here as well. So anyway, the reset function either. Um, sets it to a specific state if, if a specific state is given to the environment or it gets out a random state. This random random um, state is kind of important and because it's how the, the mechanic which we use for getting like getting information out of the environment later on, but we will uh, out of the model later on. We will get to that in a second. Then there's also the step function which takes in the action or in this case the, the talk and computes um, what the and um, what the change in the states would be if you apply that input. And then it returns the state and the reward. And then we have some normalization here, which is done so that the angle stays. So this is just a helper function, which ensures that the angle stays between um, zero and two pi, I think, or is it minus pi and pi? Um, no, it should be minus pi and pi. Okay, yeah. Um, what we are doing here in the step function is we clip the action to like the maximum possible action. So if it's something that's bigger than the maximum possible action is given in, it will be clipped to the maximum value. We compute a reward, which is consists of the normalized angle squared and some other some something connect to I mean I'm not sure if the reward is I know the reward is used, yeah. Um, and then a factor times the angular velocity and also um, a factor related to the torque applied. Okay, and then here we have, maybe that's interesting for you as well. Here we actually do the, uh, we solve the differential equations that are behind the dynamics of the, um, of the system, or of the environment. So, this here is an, 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 an Euler step, which is used to estimate how um, the pendulum will act in the future. So it should be noted at this point that this is like the actual correct way that the pendulum works, which yeah we will probably talk about a little bit at the end of this task. So this this, pen, this model actually implements like the correct workings of the pendulum, at least approximately, like this um, this. Euler steps here is, is an approximation, but it's more or less, it's, it's very close to how it actually works. Okay. So then let's have a look at the actual, at the rest. Ah, okay, this cell is just for yeah, testing your pendulum model. And then let's have a look 
uh, so how close your pendulum model is to the actual environment. So then let's have a look at the at the implementation of of the Dyna Q for the pendulum model. So here we have the model that's actually uh, the, the function that's called for this, and model is mostly the same. So up here we initialize our environment, we initialize our model, we set our action values pi, and something to lock the cumulative reward, and then we run through the episodes. And we it's essentially yeah, very similar to what we've done before. We set our initial state, and then we run we roll out the episode. We interact with the environment to gather experience. We learn from that experience, and then we do our learning from the model. Maybe what's interesting here is uh, the model is predefined, and we do not tune it here anymore. There's ob there's essentially lots of other ways that you could do this model. This is just very specific to this case. So because we um, wrote out our model before and um, yeah, we don't, you don't want to change it anymore. There's tons of other ways you could do that to do other models. You could do models that learn while you're rolling out the episode and so on and so on, maybe to make that clear. And in any way, the other than that, it's more or less, so this part, is otherwise the same. We do queue learning with the momentary experience, but we do not need to save the um, the experience that we've gathered. And then for end steps, we once more go into um, the learning from the model, and we do so by um, resetting the model to a random state. And then we choose a random action. And at this point, it should also be noted we could this could also be could theoretically be done different there's arguments for and against it we could also do um a soft like like use our policy here to choose an action in this case we we decided to do a random action which is a bit more yeah a bit more explorative and then we use that action and apply it to our model we do a step with our model and then we learn from the experience that we've gathered from this model and naturally, in our case here, we yeah we wrote the perfect model of our environment, which means that the experience that we get here is valuable and good. And maybe we can have a look after like this is all there is to this algorithm at this point. It's very very similar to the first task, with the main difference being this model, the the, the change in model. And if we have a look down here, we can see the difference in the learning curve between the two. So you can see in blue the planning from experience i.e. what we talked about in the first task, that you store your experience in, in a dictionary and just revi uh, like revisit it all the time. And in green, we have the planning from model where we actually have a model of our environment and do random random things in this model. And you can see here that yeah, the, the, the planning from model is a lot more stable, which honestly is, is to be expected because we put a lot, of, lot more um, pre-knowledge into this model. So the model... We, we can just do random interactions with the model and we get new experience from it that, that we cannot get from actually learning from experience because in the, in the experience case, we can only reuse things that we've already seen in the past, while in the model case, we can actually find new things that we have not seen so far in the, um, in the learning process. Okay, yeah. And then one more case that we want to look at is if we take our model but we choose the wrong parameters so these are really really wrong so usually we have a mass of one kilogram and yeah that uh, the um, gravity i'm not sure what the english word for this actually so this is the <laughs> this is usually like nine nine dot eight uh, eight one and or i think in our case it's actually 10 in the approximation in the approximated way and the length of the pendulum is one meter usually in the in the environment. So these are really really wrong, and that and as a result, the in the learning this um, planning with a poor model with this wrong uh, poorly parameterized model does not help at all. It actually makes it a lot worse. So what it's, this is supposed to show is that a really really good model helps us a lot in the training, but a really really bad model is can also yeah hinder our learning process, which I, I guess makes a lot of sense. And in, in conclusion, 
I, I think you could say that if you have a lot of uh, pre-knowledge yeah, pre about your environment, you can create a really, really good model, which quick, uh, increases, like speeds up your learning by a lot. At least you have to do a lot less interactions with the real environment. Then you have the middle, middle case where you do not have a lot of pre-knowledge, but you have some idea and maybe you can introduce um, and like create a, a model that you in, improve over, over time, which, which is a case we actually do not look at in this, um, in this exercise or in this lecture, but is uh, interesting nevertheless. And then we have the case that we actually look at it, look at here a lot also in the future and the future exercises, we will be looking at a lot of cases where we learn from, where we do planning from experience, where we revisit old experience that we've already gathered. The nice thing about this experience is we can be sure that it's actually real. So that's actually correct in a sense. Um, so it cannot be that if we've already experienced something, it cannot be that it's impossible in the, in the environment. And therefore there has to be some truth to it. While for a poor model, um, it's very much possible that we think we learned something about the environment while it's actually just poorly parameterized and the dynamics work a lot different than we would think from this interaction with the model. Okay, yeah, that would be it from my side, from this, um, from this exercise. So yeah, if you have questions about it, feel free, free to ask them. Um, yeah. Is there, are there any questions? I guess the overall structure is, is not that complicated, so it would not surprise me if you don't have any questions. Generally, um, the process is just queue learning and then save your experience and then you queue learning again with the with the with the safe data so and for the pendulum um for the pendulum model it's also quite similar that you just get ex like like get your experience from this model that you learn from afterwards other than the actual interactions okay then if there are no questions i guess we're already done and i will see you See you then.